Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Colonel Timothy McAteer, a military postgraduate fellow at Yale University. He's here on a year-long appointment to the Jackson Institute for Global Affairs. Colonel McAteer is an active duty U.S. Army infantry officer with 23 years of service. The majority of his service has been as a paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne Division. He has multiple tactical and operational level deployments ranging from rifle platoon leader in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and the Sinai, Egypt, up through service as a battalion and division operations officer and command at the battalion level in Afghanistan and the brigade level in Haiti and Iraq. Today we talk with Colonel McAteer about his role as a military fellow at Yale. Welcome Colonel McAteer. Thank you Marilyn, it's great to be here today. So let's begin with an overview of the program. Tell us about it and how and how you became interested in it. Well I'll start with a quick overview of sure. the Army's professional military education program okay. which uh, the fellowship falls into at the later stages. Uh, for officers, you start with pre-commissioning training. About your fifth year in the Army, you get pulled out of the active force, go into uh, a, a, the schoolhouse institution environment, and that's where you learn about staff functions and company level command. Mm -hmm. uh, halfway through your career in the Army, about your 10th or 11th year uh, as a major, um, you'll go to the Command and General Staff College, mm -hmm. which is higher level staffs. And then the, the last stage, around 19, 20 years, you go to what is known as Senior Service College. Okay. Um, the fellowship is in lieu of the Senior Service College, so I will get Senior Service College credit um, by being a fellow here at Yale. Mm -hmm. Most of my um, coworkers or other officers in the Army in Senior Service College are at one of the various service war colleges. Mm -hmm. Um, that said, though, there are about 90 Army fellows uh, throughout the nation right now in colleges and think tanks, uh, and then some in foreign, um, foreign nations at their staff colleges. Mm -hmm. uh, we have fellows at Harvard, MIT, uh, Georgetown, the University of Texas. Um, we have fellows at the Brookings Institute, uh, CSIS, the Center for New uh, American Security uh, down in D.C., and then we have fellows in Pakistan and France and, and the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so particularly though for here at Yale, um, the fellowship program here, at, as you stated earlier, uh, is at Jackson. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where my one year appointment is. And uh, that program is uh, one year, it's non-degree producing. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives me credit for the Senior Service College. And uh, my role in Jackson is to, uh, well I attend and audit courses that I, that I am interested in, sure. uh, and I also uh, focus my studies in the, in the uh, Global Affairs uh, Program, the Grand Strategy Program, International Relations Program, kind of my interest, and that keeps me tied in with the War College. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been assigned a faculty mentor at, ja at Jackson uh, because I also have research and uh, um, writing requirements that I will send back to the War College, and They'll kind okay. of check off and say, okay, you've completed your requirements for research of a topic that is of interest and importance to the Army. And, and what is that? What are you working on? Well, uh, right now I'm still in the process of developing a research question, uh, but I, I'm focusing on uh, Middle East, North Africa, I think, um, and uh, some of our policies there as you look around uh, today when um, the events in, in Libya and then in Northern Africa after the uh, Arab Spring mm -hmm. uh, and how they relate to our, our foreign policy. And, and recently, in the last couple of years, the military has established uh, Africa Command, which is a regional uh, geographic uh, combatant command mm -hmm. um, focused on the continent. Um, so they're all relevant topics as we look at the military instrument of power being employed uh, in Northern Africa. So that's what I'm looking at. Okay. And why did you choose to come to Yale versus doing the service um, school program? Well, a, a lot of reasons. Um, you have to compete, first of all. Mm -hmm. So you put in a list of preferences and kind of cross your fingers. Um, I leaned heavy uh, towards going to a, a college, a university setting. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I felt it was important at this stage of my career to maybe, uh, not that the Army or the service schools are not helpful, but mm -hmm. to get away from uh, an environment where I'm very comfortable uh, and be immersed into an education environment uh, that takes me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Yale has already started uh, to do that in many ways. Um, also, the access to the 
uh, intellectual capital that an institution like Yale has sure. is, uh, is unequaled anywhere uh, in the United States. The program here at Yale is only two years old, and I might have mentioned that before. I'm only the second fellow here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's interesting um, the way the culture is changing a little bit at Yale with respect to the military. Right. We just um, allowed the ROTC to come back on campus, um, I believe, maybe a year or two ago. I'm not quite sure of the timing, but fairly recently. Right. Yeah, both Air Force and Navy uh, have programs here. Mm -hmm. uh, little disappointed that the Army didn't. Uh, one of the things I'm not here to do, though, at Yale is to recruit and, mm -hmm. and try to get people into the military. I'm here to... It's to more of a personal enlightenment kind of thing. It is. It is. And then I also believe that I have uh, something to contribute mm -hmm. uh, to the classroom as well. Right. Let's talk about that a little bit. What do you think that you can contribute? Well, I think I bring um, a little bit different perspective on, on some global affairs from a very practical uh, experience level. Mm -hmm. um, I've been deployed multiple times at various levels from the tactical, operational, and strategic level. Uh, you know, this training program, the, the War College or Senior Service College Fellowship, is designed to get me to think at the strategic level. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning a lot in that, but as I've learned in a lot of the classes, grand strategy and some of the international relation classes that I attend, uh, there's a lot of interest in Iraq and Afghanistan and how the military as an instrument of mm -hmm. national power is employed. And I feel like I can give some real-world practical experiences uh, to contribute to the dialogue within mm -hmm. the classroom. Can you think of an, one particular example of where you actually contributed something that you experienced? Uh, I was able in uh, one of the great programs here is the Grand Strategy Program mm -hmm. uh, with Professor Gaddis, uh, Professor yes. Hill, Professor uh, Kennedy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have the uh, great honor of receiving uh, with a panel, including those gentlemen, um, Marshall briefs from, from the students. Um, and these Marshall briefs are grand strategy briefs that they've developed, and then they present them to us, and I always play a senior DOD official. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can give the Department of Defense's uh, position on their strategy towards, let's say, the Middle East. I just sat through one that was uh, the, the uh, uh, revitalizing Europe and the relationship of the United States and Europe and, mm -hmm. and the defense structure in Europe. Um, so what I was able to offer when we talked about the particulars of, of that student-led uh, proposal was the, the concerns of the military in terms of basing, uh, in terms of reduction of forces in places that you know we might feel are a little more important, uh, where they had had through their readings thought, well, this would be very easy to do, and I was able to give them, I think, a dose of reality mm -hmm. um, in the application of their strategy. Okay. So. Prior to you coming um, to this program, I know you're active duty, w where were you stationed and what were you doing? Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been at Fort Bragg. Okay. Um, and for the last 10 years, I've been very involved in, in uh, well, the two wars that we've uh, been involved with, mm -hmm. uh, been engaged with. Uh, I started out coming out of that mid-level school that I mentioned earlier, the Gen Command and General Staff College, and I was able to attend a second year at Fort Leavenworth. Uh, we like to call Fort Leavenworth the intellectual center of the Army there in Kansas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, But it is, and that's our schoolhouse uh -huh. um, at the Advanced Military Studies Program, which gave me access to jobs uh, that I might not have gotten before, and I became a, a planner at the division level as we were going into Iraq uh, in 2003. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a lot of exposure it's a lot of hard work, but uh, that gave me a lot of exposure into how operations are really put together uh, on a grand scale. Mm -hmm. um, and from that job, I served in a, the battalion level, uh, which is an uh, infantry battalion, is about 800 uh, paratroopers uh, in the 82nd, uh, and deployed to Afghanistan, uh, deployed again to Iraq, uh, came back, and then I just kind of worked my way up through the division. I ended up commanding a battalion in Afghanistan for 15 months, mm -hmm. um, doing primarily counterinsurgency operations uh, in two pretty large provinces inside of Afghanistan. Uh, that and, was and what does that actually mean, counterinsurgency? What do you do? Well, counterinsurgency <laughs> uh, is is um, it's an interesting um, operational concept, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of debate in the military, um, but it has proven to be fairly effective uh, when dealing in post-conflict type environments. Mm -hmm. um, when we finished uh, in early 2001, 2002, the Taliban were defeated in Afghanistan, then 
you know, there was this uh, influx of more conventional forces to try to consolidate the gains. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the mission, as you know, in Iraq and both Afghanistan, they started to evolve. Uh, Counterinsurgency has a component of it which could be considered nation building, uh, but it's a it's a an operation that is very population centric, mm -hmm. um, where you you are trying to build the security forces and, and the capability of security forces within the nation, the host nation. So you're working with them to Absolutely. help them do that. Absolutely. So we do uh, partnered operations with their military, with their police. Uh, and, but the centerpiece of the strategy is, is the population, is protecting the population from insurgents mm -hmm. uh, who are trying to destabilize uh, the situation. It's extremely complex. Uh, it can at times be uh, very dangerous, but it can also be very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. uh, when you start to see the progress uh, in security forces, when you start to see local economies uh, and the population starting to flourish, when you start to see schools open, um, uh, children, girls in, the, in those nations in particular starting to get an opportunity for an education in some, some places. Uh, but it's very difficult. And then the goal always of, of counterinsurgency is to eventually turn over operations to the nation and then depart. Sure. And it takes a very long time. And there's a, a point in counterinsurgency, it's a crossover point where their security forces become capable enough to do independent operations, not just tactically, but also operationally mm -hmm. through logistics uh, and command and control primarily, uh, so they can control and sustain their forces sure. in the field. Uh, and that takes a very long time. And then my last job was as a brigade commander. I took command in Haiti right after the, uh, the earthquake. The mm -hmm. brigade had deployed there. I left Afghanistan, showed up in Haiti, took command. I uh, was there for a couple months, and that was extremely uh, rewarding, mm -hmm. uh, rewarding operation. And then back to Fort Bragg, uh, and then we were the last brigade uh, in Iraq that operated in Anbar mm -hmm. and, uh, and Baghdad provinces, and then we redeployed back in December. So this time last year I was in, in Iraq, came home in late December, mm -hmm. and then uh, prepared to come to Yale. Right, right. So what are you hoping to ultimately take away from your experience here at Yale? Uh, what I've discovered, um, you know, you asked earlier what what I bring to the program, mm -hmm. and I think uh, diversity um, is, is probably the one word that would sum up what this experience. Uh, I think I bring a diverse set of ideas and views mm -hmm. to, the, to the institution. Uh, but more importantly, and what I think I'll take away from here, is I've been exposed to uh, very diverse and different points of view, often from some very young uh, and intelligent, mm -hmm. extremely intelligent and driven uh, students here at Yale. Uh, I'm very um, impressed uh, by the students and the faculty, but mm -hmm. primarily the undergrad and graduate students that I've been uh, in contact with. Yale will produce and ha has produced and will continue to produce uh, senior um, policy officials within our nation. Um, I think if I can impart on them a little bit of a better understanding on, on the military instrument of uh, national power uh, in my short time here, uh, and then they can impart on me uh, a different way of looking at the same problems uh, and broaden my uh, horizons a little bit, broaden my understanding mm -hmm. uh, from a civilian uh, perspective. I think that's very important because ultimately the military, uh, rightly so, I mean we work for our civilian leaders uh, day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Um, so that dialogue is critically important. Right, right. I know you've been here only a short time, but in that time, have you have any of your views been changed on on anything that you um, you know had previously thought? No. 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 <laughs> no. no I I, uh, I think I'm I'm learning to be a little more of a critical thinker. Uh huh. Um, you know, over the last ten years, we've worked. Uh, out of our comfort zone a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of interagency work, a lot of work with the State Department, uh, with non-governmental organizations that, that five or six years ago would have been almost unheard of with sure. the military. And, and the drivers of that are really our, our junior officers and our non-commissioned officers, our 20s, you know, mid-20, early 30 level leadership mm -hmm. in the Army. Uh, I was on a little bit of the tail end of that, but you quickly learn how important it is um, that we, we do our best to speak with one voice. We have unity of effort in our operations, uh, but interagency uh, employment of all the instruments of national power mm -hmm. are, are critically important. Right. Um, and so you have a good environment here uh, to develop those skills. So a particular case, probably not, but mm -hmm. I definitely, 
you know, you, you can't help but sit in some of these classes with the, with the, the professors that are here and, and not get a, um, you, you sit in awe sometimes at their level of understanding and the depth of their understanding mm -hmm. um, uh, on the topics that they discuss, mm -hmm. whether it's national strategy or, or economics or the study of social theory and political science. Um, and it, and it, it's forced me uh, to be a lot more, I think, critical in my thinking, maybe a little more skeptical of some of the mm -hmm. things that I've heard outside of the military. Sure. So in that regard, it's been very helpful. And what are your plans once you complete your uh, fellowship here? It's hard to tell. I'll go back into the active force. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still active. Yes. Uh, but I'll go back to work. Um, one of the beautiful things here is, is, you know, six months ago I was responsible for 30 700 paratroopers in a brigade with six battalions. Wow. Uh, and now I'm responsible for myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, humbling sometimes when you're, when you command an organization that large to, to uh, you walk in mean, That's a, room. a huge number of, of people. It is. And, and, and when you're the commander, the, you know, you kind of, people tell you what you want to hear and they, they uh, uh, give you the things that you, you want when you ask for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but here I have none of that. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's it's uh, it's humbling at times, and it's it's important uh, to remember that. Uh, but I will go from here and uh, go back into the active force. I could potentially end up on the joint staff mm -hmm. uh, down in D.C. I could go to one of the combatant commands, either PACOM out in the Pacific or mm -hmm. AFRICOM, which is responsible for Africa but headquartered in, in Germany right mm -hmm. now. Uh, or uh, potentially I could go back to Afghanistan. Uh, now, do you get, year. do you any, do you have a voice in where you go or, or basically you're just sent where they tell you to go? Very little voice. Uh, needs of the, of the Army come mm -hmm. first. Uh, they work with us, but uh, at the end of the day, we go where we're told to go mm -hmm. and, uh, and serve uh, to the best of our ability wherever we end up. Okay. Well, this has been very enlightening. Thank you so much for being here today and, and sharing some of your work. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity. And if I could, uh, mm -hmm. just to finish the... Sure. The one thing I'd like to add is, is you know, um, I'll be followed by another fellow next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we are available resources uh, for anybody that wants to uh, bring us into discussion, lectures, uh, panels, um, and not to just promote a military standpoint, but mm -hmm. to offer a military standpoint. Sure, and, another uh, viewpoint. Another viewpoint. And so we're here and we're, we're willing to, to help in any way possible uh, and participate in any way possible. Good to know. Thank you very Great. much for being here. Well, thank you, Marilyn. Okay. For more information about Colonel McAteer, please visit our website at yale.edu backslash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.